it looks like a fastball for 53 feet and then the last seven feet it just turbo dives into the dirt so it's like yeah it's easy to say don't swing at it but then you're also going to be taking a lot of hittable fastballs if you're if your plan is just never swinging it because it looks i mean it's just it's a fastball until it's not everybody knew he, you're going to get a ghost fork with two strikes so he started throwing that fastball basically low fastball yeah. that people were just taking and freezing it yeah freezing because I mean, the way to take the pitch is basically be like, all right, if the pitch starts here, I'm not swinging it because I know it's going to start there. It's going to look hittable, and then it's just going to dive in the dirt. But then, yeah, so when that fastball comes out of the window that you've told yourself, I'm not swinging in that window, I mean, it just, and it just stays in the same plane and it's strike three, and you're just like, all right, well, I can't do anything about that. Like, you're either giving him the, the take fastball or you're going to be susceptible to the chase chase splitter. You can't really, you can't really do both. He spins it. It's like 800. Like, it's a super low spin rate pitch. So theoretically, you'd be able to see the difference between his forcing fastball spin at 22, 2300, whatever it is, and that splitter spin at 800. Um, you would think you'd be able to see that that's a vast difference. You'd think you'd be able to see that and then use that to lay off, um, lay off of it when he throws it. But that's obviously not the case because that that difference exists every time he throws it and everyone's still swinging at it all the time. I hit it once. I, I, jam, <laughs> I got jammed and rolled over to short side for third base, but I didn't make contact. And then I swung at one that went like 42 feet too. So I did both those. I did both. <laughs> did, did you give yourself a high five if for actually making contact? Right. He threw it yeah. and I hit it. I was like, let's go. That's great. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, exceeding expectations against that pitch for sure. Who's the toughest pitcher um, that you've had to face? Or the toughest pitch? What, whichever one you want to answer. The pitch is the Matt Brash slider. I've said that. I don't, that thing is crazy. Um, it's just so – I mean, so, I say it's so hard. Sometimes it's 90. Sometimes it's 83. And just the angle he throws it from, the release point, everything, that that thing's nuts. And it's kind of universally agreed upon against all the guys who have seen it. It's like it's just riding like up and across the zone the whole way. Like it's like you got to kind of try to stay on top of it because it's not going to come down. It's going to have the higher vertical break than you're anticipating. You can't, you can, I mean, like you can sit on it, right? It's like, all right, he's going to throw it. So I'm just going to sit on it. I'm going to wait for it. And you see it and it starts where you think it needs to start to be in the zone and then it just keeps going. Pitcher-wise, the guy who gave me the most trouble last year is Pavetta. Pavetta owned me. I think I was 0 for 4 or 4 strikeouts. He started against us twice, and I don't think I came close once. He, for whatever reason, or I know the reason. I mean, he dotted against me. He threw all three pitches exactly where he wanted to. He located fastball up and away. He located the the tighter slider down and away. He threw the sweeper off the plate. He dropped in a couple of the big curveballs. He just he threw me really good sequences and really good executed um, and executed his locations really well. So he was the guy who gave me the most trouble last year. Um Glasnow's so tough. Glasnow and Batista are similar but different. Tyler's just so tall that everything's coming downhill, just so downhill. So it's like really downhill fastball that carries a ton. And then there's – because of how high he releases the ball, there's no shape to either break the ball. It's just like they're down to more down. It never pops. Is There's never any hump in either of them, which is why he gets – him and uh, Blake Snell are similar in that way just because they're both so downhill – that they just spike that breaking ball and get so much chase on it because there's never any kind of hump, never any any kind of shape. It just looks like the fastball and it just keeps going for, further down. So they kind of they remind me of each other in a lot of ways, just kind of opposite sides of the rubber, obviously. But the way they pitch and the way they approach um, reminds me of each other. Uh, Batista is the same. He, I mean, he's throwing the ball from like 15 feet in the air straight down at 102, and that splitter just kind of falls off the table. He's a big use kind of kind of pick a pitch guy. Um, just go up there and try to hit one of them, and then uh, I mean, you could, the, you do, if you're if you're on fastball up and he throws a splitter, it's not great. You have a chance. You can kind of see it pop and hang a little bit, but that stuff's incredible. It's funny that you mentioned Glassnow and Snell because that's what I was going to say when you were describing Glassnow. I was going to say that's yeah. exactly what Blake Snell does. He just throws the yep. piss out of the ball from a high it's, arm angle. Right. It's down everything down 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 because I mean that's what we were talking about earlier about. The factors to let you recognize different pitches. One of them is like if I got those a breaking ball, and instead of a fastball coming straight out of his hand, if it pops up at all, your brain goes, "Okay, breaking ball." And but neither Blake's nor Tyler's ever does that because they're throwing it so high up in the air and so straight over the top that it's just everything's downhill, downhill, downhill. There's never any shape to anything. 